Hi everyone. We're going to start a new unit called Rational Expressions. And um, we're going to perform operations between rational expressions, but first we need to define it. So the definition of a rational expression is that it consists of a polynomial divided by a non-zero polynomial. So let's write that down. A rational expression consists of a polynomial divided by a non-zero polynomial. For example, these are rational expressions, 120x over 100 minus x, um, 2x plus 1 divided by 2x squared minus x minus 1. And then we could have more than one variable like 3x squared plus 12xy minus 15y squared divided by 6x cubed minus 6 x, y squared. Okay, but with rational expressions, we have to be careful when the, num when the denominator or the numerator is equal to zero. So let's just take a little brief break here and discuss when a rational expression is undefined. And it turns out that a rational expression is undefined when the denominator is equal to zero. And let's just discuss why that is, that why it should be that case. Now, numbers are polynomials, so let's consider these cases. Let's say we're going to take a 0 divided by a 4 and compare that to 4 divided by 0 or a 0 divided by a 0. Now, let's say these fractions exist. And let's call the answer x. OK, so in mathematics, when we divide, a fraction is a division problem. When we divide, we could always check by taking the answer and multiplying it by the denominator. So in this case, what number times 4 equals There is a unique answer. A number times 4 equals 0 when x equals 0. So 0 divided by 4 is equal to 0. There can be a 0 in the numerator, but not in the denominator. Now if we look at the next example, 4 divided by 0 equals x. Well, when we check it, x times 0 equals 4. Well, any number times 0 is 0. So that immediately leads to a contradiction. So 0 can never, ever be in the denominator of a fraction. If 0 is in the denominator and in the numerator, something worse happens. 0 divided by 0 equals x. That means x times 0 is equal to 0. And x could be any number. So if x could be any number, 0 over 0 could be 1, could be 2, could be 3, could be anything. And our system completely falls apart. So the only place 0 is a lot allowed in the fraction is only in the numerator, never in the denominator. Never. Okay, so now that we've discussed this, let's take a look at this rational expression. Okay, and the rational expression is x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, looking at this rational expression, it is understood that x could be any number except when the denominator is 0. So x minus 2 cannot equal 0, which means x is not equal to 2. 
That is implied when we write the rational expression that way. To simplify this rational expression, well, recall, when you want to simplify any fraction, let's say we take a look at 15 over 20. Immediately, we think of 15 as 5 times 3, and we think of 20 as 5 times 2 times 2. Notice that we can divide through here the common factors of 5 over 5, which is a ratio of 1, and that's it. So we get the answer of 3 over 4, which is in simplest form. Well, that's exactly what we do with rational expressions. We completely factor the numerator and the denominator. So let's write that. And x squared minus 4 is the difference of two squares, which can be factored into x plus 2 times x minus 2, all divided by x minus 2. And when we divide through the common factor, which is x minus 2, our answer comes out to be x plus 2. But when we write this, it is implied, well, it's implied as a rational expression that x cannot equal 2. But when we write it this way, it appears that it is just the equation of a line, and we have to write down x does not equal to 2. I'd like to take a look at the graph of y equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. We will see that it is the equation of the line y equals x plus 2, but something very strange happens when x equals 2. So let's take a look at that. So I wanted to show you what happens when we graph this rational function, which should look like the line y equals x plus 2. So I graph this on Desmos, and notice how I labeled the rational function f of x. So I could, we could input values of x and get the y value. So we have a table here, and I have x starting from negative 3 going up to 3. And notice how the, the, um, the program plots these points, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 0, uh, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, so that for every x value, we add 2 to get the y value, which is what we expected. But when we get to 2, we get undefined. And at that point, we have what's called an open circle. And it's hard. The, the uh, Desmos does not put it there. But there is an open circle at 2, 4. Okay, it's a little hard to get it, but there it is. So at 2, 4, we don't have a value. It is undefined, but everywhere else we do. So this rational function is equivalent to the linear function, y equals x plus 2, but when x equals 2, that point, y equals 4, is omitted, and we have an open circle. And that would take care of the graphical interpretation of this function. OK, let's take a look at another rational function a little bit more complicated than the previous one. f of x equals 2x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 1. So to simplify this, we need to factor the numerator and denominator. We notice that the numerator is already factored. The denominator, though, can be factored and the factors would be here uh, 2x plus 1 and x minus 1. Now, when we set the denominator to 0, we get the restrictions for this rational function. x cannot equal negative a half here. And when x minus 1 equals 0, x cannot equal 1. And to simplify this, we realize that we can divide through the 2x plus 1s because they are one a form of 1. 
So the simplest form, this becomes 1 over x minus 1, but we must write the restrictions. x is not equal to negative a half, and x is not equal to 1. Now, when we graph this rational function, something's going to happen at these x values, at x equals negative a half and x equals 1. Let's see what would happen. Now, when we graph this rational function, y equals 2x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 1, notice this graph is totally disconnected. It's not like our other, other rational function. And if we go to trace, okay, and we're going to trace with a step of a half, okay, so I have a step of a half, and if I try tracing here, trace, graph trace, or trace all will do. Notice that as I move this arrow to the right, I get the y, the x and y values of this rational function. If I move it to the left, here at x equals 1, we don't have a value. And this line here is called a vertical asymptote to the graph. So as x approaches 1 from the right, the y values get very large. And as x approaches 1 from the left, the y values get very small. So this is represented by a vertical asymptote. It's a vertical line that the function approaches. And we know that the function is undefined at x equals 1. Now, when we go further to the left and we hit point, negative point 0.5, notice that there's no value there. There's an open circle at negative a half, this, circle, this point right here. Even though it looks like it's there, it isn't. Because when we trace to the right and to the left, we do not have a value at negative a half. So this is an example of a rational function that has both a whole and a vertical asymptote. So it's logical to ask, how can we tell which is which when we graph? Now, when we graph this rational function, y equals 2x plus 1 over 2x squared minus x minus 1, notice this graph is totally disconnected. It's not like our other, other rational function. And if we go to trace, okay, and we're going to trace with a step of a half, okay, so I have a step of a half. And if I try tracing here, trace, graph trace, or trace all will do. Notice that as I move this arrow to the right, I get the y, the x and y values of this rational function. If I move it to the left, here at x equals 1, we don't have a value. And this line here is called a vertical asymptote to the graph. So as x approaches 1 from the right, the y values get very large. And as x approaches 1 from the left, the y values get very small. So this is represented by a vertical asymptote. It's a vertical line that the function approaches. And we know that the function is undefined at x equals 1. Now, when we go further to the left and we hit point, negative point 0.5, notice that there's no value there. There's an open circle at negative a half, this, circle, this point right here. Even though it looks like it's there, it isn't. Because when we trace to the right and to the left, we do not have a value at negative a half. So this is an example of a rational function that has both a whole and a vertical asymptote. So it's logical to ask, 
how can we tell which is which when we graph? Well, if we revisit this function in its factored form, we found that there was a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. That's when the denominator, this part, was equal to 0. But notice when x equals 1, the numerator isn't equal to 0. Whereas when x is negative a half, both the numerator and denominator are equal to 0. So one can, con one can conjecture that the graph has a vertical asymptote when its denominator is zero and its numerator is not. And a rational function has a whole when both the numerator and denominator are both equal to zero. But be that as it may, my goal here is to review how to simplify rational functions. So let's just write a little summary. To simplify rational expressions, First, we have to factor the numerator and denominator completely. And once the numerator and denominator are factored completely, we look at the denominator write the restrictions for the variable which is the the values of the variable that would make the denominator equal to 0 Okay, and then we could divide both the numerator and denominator by any common factors. Which is a form of one. And that would be the simplification. So um, let's take a look at a few of them. Let's try these. I'll call this number three. Let's simplify x squared minus 7x minus 18 divided by 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Okay, let's try simplifying that. Pause and then replay. Okay, well, the numerator can be factored into x minus 9 times x plus 2, and the denominator is factored into 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. And at this point, when we set the denominator to 0, we could say x is not equal to a half or negative 2. We divide through the common factors that appear on, on top and bottom. So that's the x plus 2. And our answer would be x minus 9 over 2x minus 1. And that would be our simplest form. But again, these are the restrictions. All right, let's consider this problem. Let's consider this question, x plus 3 over 3 plus x and x minus 3 over 3 minus x. Now, these, these appear a lot in the unit. Let's just make sure we understand what they're equal to. In the first one, x plus 3 over 3 plus x could be written as x plus 3 over x plus 3 using the commutative property, which is equal to 1, as long as x is not equal to 3. But when subtraction is not commutative. So when we have x minus 3 over 3 minus x, here we know x is not equal to 3. However, what is this equal to? 
Well, when we substitute numbers for x, say x equals 5, we get 5 minus 3 over 3 minus 5. That would give us a ratio of negative 1. In fact, whatever value x is, the ratio here is negative 1. And to prove that, we could factor out a negative 1 in the denominator and then divide through. And we see that 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1. So it's safe to, to make a note of the following, that when we have a minus b over b minus a, the ratio is negative 1 as long as a is not equal to uh, b. And this appears a lot in rational expressions when we want to simplify. So keeping that in mind, let's simplify this problem. Okay, so the next one is 3x squared plus 12xy minus 15y squared all over 6xy squared minus 6x cubed. So reviewing factoring techniques, the first thing we should factor out is the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor in the numerator is 3, which leaves us with x squared plus 4xy minus 5y squared. The greatest common factor in the denominator is a 6 and an x. So we take that out. And we're left with um, y squared minus x squared. OK, we can still factor. When we factor the numerator, notice that we have an x and an x. We have a y and a y. Treating this as just one variable, ignoring the y, two factors of negative 5 that add up to 4 would be positive 5 and negative 1. And the denominator can be factored into y plus x times y minus x. Now, dividing through, notice that there's an x minus y and a y minus x, like our a minus b over b minus a. So that factors through to a negative 1. Let's agree that we'll put the negative 1 on top. And the 3 goes into the 6 twice. And the y plus x and the x plus 5y can, do not divide through. So our final answer is negative 1 times x plus 5y all divided by 2 times y plus x. And we forgot to put our restrictions here when we set the denominator to 0, x cannot equal 0, x cannot equal negative y, and x cannot equal y. And that would be our answer in simplest form. Notice I did not distribute just in case I forgot to divide through a common factor in the numerator and denominator. This is a perfect answer. Okay, let's take a look at the next problem. Okay, I'd like you to try this one by yourself. Copy it down. Pause the video, simplify, and write the restrictions. Okay, so when we start factoring a greatest common factor in the numerator, we have a 3 again. And in the denominator, the greatest common factor is 9x. So we have the y squared minus x squared again. Now, we can factor the numerator into x and a y. But ignoring the y, two factors of negative 4 that add up to 3 are positive 4 and negative 1. And the difference of two squares in the denominator are just y minus x times y plus x. So the 3 goes into the 9 three times. These divide through again to a negative 1. So our final answer would be negative 1 times x plus 4y divided by 3 times y plus x. And the restrictions on the variable are x cannot equal 0, looking at this line, y 
or negative y. And that completes our lesson on simplifying rational expressions. Okay, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.